got on the train with two hundred dollars. He couldn't see any harm in a friendly game of cards. What if the other men were strangers? And take Joe Collins. He's got a nice wife at home. But he met this girl at the bar, and she looked after the first couple of drinks. There's a good old-fashioned word for people like us. We call them suckers. And there are other people. People who stay up nights figuring out how to take away what they've got. There are all kinds of games. Mike here, for instance. He's got everything in me. He's young, he's healthy, got a job. And he's got a plenty of food. Big factories to make things a man can use. Big cities to do the business of a big company. And people, lots of people. Enough to work the farm and build the factories, dig the mines, run the business. All kinds of people, people from different countries with different religions, different colored skins, free people. They can live together and work together and build America together because they're free. Free to vote, to say what they please, go to their own churches, to pick their own jobs. Yeah, Mike's got something, all right. He's got America. But there are guys who stay up nights figuring out how to take that away from him. I happen to know the facts. Now, friends, I'm just an average American. But I'm an American-American. And some of the things I see in this country of ours make my blood boil. I see people with foreign apple money. I see Negroes holding jobs that belong to me and you. Now, I ask you, if we allow this thing to go on, what's going to become of us real Americans? I've heard this kind of talk before, but I never expected to hear it in America. This fellow seems to know what he's talking about. What are we real Americans going to do about it? You'll find it right here in this little pamphlet. The truth about Negroes and foreigners. The truth about the Catholic Church. Do you believe in that kind of talk? I don't know. Makes pretty good sense to me. And I tell you, friends, we'll never be able to call this country our own until it's a country without. Without what? Yeah, without what? Without Negroes. Without alien foreigners. Without Catholics. Without Freemasons. You know, What's wrong with the Masons? I'm a Mason. Hey, that fellow's talking about me. And that makes a difference, doesn't it? These are your enemies. These are the people who are trying to take over our country. Now you know them. You know what they stand for. And it's up to you and me to fight them. Fight them and destroy them before they destroy us. Thank you. Before he said Mason, you were ready to agree with him. Well, yes, but he was talking about, what about those other people? But in this country, we have no other people. We are American people. What about you? You aren't American, are you? I was born in Hungary, but now I am an American citizen. And I have seen what this kind of talk can do. I saw it in Berlin. What were you doing there? I was a professor at the university. I heard the same words we have heard today. But I was a fool then. I thought Nazis were crazy people, stupid fanatics. But unfortunately, it was not so. You see, they knew that they were not strong enough to conquer a unified country. So they split Germany into small groups. They used prejudice as a practical weapon to cripple the nation. Of course, that was not easy to do. They had to work hard to do it. You see, we human beings are not born with prejudices. Always they are made for us, made by someone who wants something. 
Remember that when you hear this kind of talk, somebody's going to get something out of it, and it isn't going to be you. This is not classroom theory. I saw it happen. I saw it first in Berlin in 1932. Five young men that I knew were standing in the crowd listening to the Nazi speaker. Eric was a Catholic. Anton, a student of mine, was a Jew. Heinrich owned a small hardware store. Karl was a farmer. And Hans was an unemployed metal worker. To all Bavarian Germans, I say it is time you inherited the nation which rightfully belongs to you. To you alone belongs the glorious destiny of the greater Germany. The Nazi party will provide land for the farmer, work for the worker, and profits for the small businessman. Who is getting these things now? The Jew. The Jew who has stolen our nation and our birthright. Who makes all the money and takes all our jobs? The Jew! He must be shunned. He must be ostracized. He must be eliminated. And the Catholics. We don't want our great nation run by a foreign church. We Germans will know what to do with these people when the time comes. They end their faith must be destroyed. Then there are the Freemasons. In Germany, we have no place for secret societies. There may be only one society, and that is the Nazi party. There may be no secrecy about that in the new greater Germany. One by one, he attacked each minority and he split them off one from the other. These men were all fellow Germans when they came here today. Now they were split into rival groups suspicious of each other, hating each other. They were being swindled, all of them. But the man who was really being fooled was Hans. He was pure German, according to Nazi standards. To him, they promised everything, and he fell for it. That's how Hans became a superman. They gave him a uniform, and they pumped up his ego. He wasn't just a little fellow out of work anymore. He was a member of the master race. Hundreds and thousands of others like him, all playing a sucker's game. They gambled with other people's liberty, and of course they lost their own. A nation of suckers. Hitler needed these people. There was lots of work to be done. There were trade unions to be smashed because unions were organized and might offer resistance. There were many political parties in Germany. These the Nazis destroyed. They were determined to smash every organization where people might band together and resist them. There were Jews to be beaten and killed. The Jews were not powerful, but they were a convenient excuse for all the nation's ills. And besides, a Nazi party member could not take over this man's store. Hundreds of Catholics were put in jail because the Catholic Church had strength and could resist the Nazi drive powers. They had split the nation into a hundred pieces and then one by one they had destroyed the pieces. Over these broken pieces the Nazis rode into power. One party, one nation, one religion. <laughs> 